f of x equals natural log of 1 plus x, we are going to rewrite this as a Maclaurin series, which is in the form of the summation of the k derivative at the point 0 divided by k factorial x to the power k, k from 0 to infinity. As f of x equals natural log of 1 plus x, the function at 0 is natural log of 1 or 0. The first derivative, which is 1 divided by 1 plus x, or you can write it as 1 multiplied by 1 plus x to the power negative first. Then the f prime at 0 is 1. The f double prime is negative 1 multiplied by 1 plus x to the power negative second. And the f prime f double prime at 0 is negative 1. If a derivative is negative 1 times negative 2 multiplied by 1 plus x to the power negative third, so the f triple prime at 0 is negative 1 multiplied by negative 2, or we can rewrite it as negative 1 to the second power multiplied by 2 factorial which is the same as 2 factorial. The fourth derivative is negative 1 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by negative 3 multiplied by 1 plus x to the power negative fourth. The fourth derivative at 0 is negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3. As we see this as negative 1 to the third power multiplied by 3 factorial or negative of the quantity 3 factorial. Find a couple more orders of the derivative. For the fifth derivative at x, we see clear and clearer patterns of the terms. For the fifth derivative, negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 4 times 1 plus x to the power negative fifth. And at the point 0, we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. As we see this as negative 1 to the fourth, because negative 1 times itself 4 times, multiply by 1, 2, 3, and 4, or the 4 factorial. And it becomes positive 4 factorial. That should be enough for the pattern. If you want to do one more, so the sixth derivative negative 1 times negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, multiplied by 1 plus x to the negative 6. So the sixth derivative at 0 is negative 1 to the fifth multiplied by 5 factorial, which is negative of the quantity 5 factorial. So we can predict the end derivative of the function would be negative 1 to the power n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1 factorial for n starting from 0 because the first non-zero coefficient would be at the first derivative for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, and for the Maclaurin series, as f of x equals the summation of the k derivative at the point 0 divided by k factorial times x to the power k, k starting from 0 to infinity, or expanded form as f at 0 plus f prime at 0 over 1 factorial times x plus f double prime at 0 over 2 factorial times x squared, and so forth. The f at 0 already 0. Then we're going to start the summation at k equals 1 to infinity. And the fk, the k derivative at the point at the point 0 will be of the form negative 1 to the power k minus 1 multiplied by k minus 1 factorial. So negative 1 to the k minus 1 times k minus 1 factorial and divided by the k factorial.
multiply by x to the power k. From the coefficient portion, we can reduce the factorial terms as k factorial is k multiplied by k minus 1 factorial. Now we can simplify further to have the natural log of 1 plus x as the Maclaurin series summation k from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power k minus 1 divided by k times k to the power k, uh, x to the power k. Next, we're going to find the interval of convergence. To find the interval of convergence, first look for the, the radius of convergence by using the ratio test condition. The series will converge if r equals the, uh, the limit k approaches infinity of the absolute value of k plus 1 divided by a k less than 1. For this series, the a k is negative 1 to the k minus 1 over k multiplied by x to the power k. Then from the limit, as k approaches infinity, the absolute value negative 1 to the power k plus 1 minus 1 becomes power k divided by k plus 1 quantity on the bottom multiplied by x to the k plus 1 and then multiply by the ak term the reciprocal of the ak term sorry which is k on the top divided by negative 1 to the k minus 1 times x to the power k in the absolute value and it must less than 1. Cancel the terms as x to the k plus 1 is x to the power k multiplied by x to the first. So x to the k, x to the k reduce. The negative sign will be disappeared as you take the absolute value. Then the left-hand side, we have the limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of the x divided by k plus 1 and multiplied by k. The absolute value is not necessary for the k since k is greater than or equal to 1 for the summation. And this is the inequality less than 1. The limit is involving k. So rearrange the inequality as the absolute value of x is less than the limit of the quantity k plus 1 divided by k. Take the limit as k approaches infinity. We have the limit value approaching the value 1. So the radius of convergence is 1. We say the series converges within the interval. Absolute value of the x less than less than one or x greater than negative one, less than positive one. And next we are going to check the two endpoints. At x equals negative 1, it forms the series, the summation negative 1 to the power, uh, as we see, negative 1 to the power k minus 1 over k for the coefficient. And then multiply by x, which is negative 1 to the k. Just rewrite the summation here for our convenience. K starting from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k multiplied by
Next, we are going to test the two endpoints. At x equals negative one and x equals one. Since the series is of the form negative one to the power k minus one divided by k multiplied by x to the power k, k from one to infinity. At x equals negative one, we obtain the series of the form negative one to the power k minus one divided by k multiplied by x as negative one to the power k, k from one to infinity. Simplify the numerator as they are the same base. The powers of the exponents can be combined as negative one to the power k minus one plus k or two k minus one. The 2k is an even number, then it can finally become the form, the summation of negative one to the power negative first divided by k, k from one to infinity, or summation of negative one over k for k from one to infinity. It turns out to be the P series with the P equals one. With the condition of the P series or the P series test, if P is less than or equal to one, the series diverges. So we can say the series diverges at X equals negative one by the P series test. And then we are going to check the other endpoint. At x equals one, the series becomes negative one to the k minus one multiplied by one to the power k divided by k, k from one to infinity. Simplify to be summation of negative one to the k minus one divided by k because one to the power k is also one. This turns out to be alternating series with the ak equals one over k. By the alternating series test, check the first one, the non-increasing terms. So we can see ak plus one not greater than the ak term, which is true for all k greater than or equal to one. The next condition for the alternating series test the limit of the ak as k approaches infinity or the limit of one over k as k approaches infinity equals zero. Then since both conditions are met, we can, see, we can say the series converges at x equals one by the alternating series test. In summary, we can say the natural log absolute value or uh, natural log of one plus x as the summation of negative one to the power k minus one over k multiplied by x to the power k, k from one to infinity has the interval of convergence negative one not including but at one, we include it.